King and Asura is about a bunch of self-centered assholes with death wishes that happen to be employed by some of the most powerful corporations in the world to participate in this fighting tournament that has only one rule – no weapons. This leads to countless thrilling and engaging fights between these men, their bare fists and their pure resolve to win. Resolve that is so powerful it consumes their lives, it keeps them up at night, it brings them closer and closer to death just to bring them back ready for more. Now naturally every character in here from the ones that fight to the ones that don't is fucking insane and the manga does a great job portraying that with this cartoonish and yet serious art style. Now, is this always perfect on a uh, visual and conceptual level? No, <laughs> no it's not, and I'm gonna elaborate on that after the quirky title drop. I'm a god. Now you might not expect this, but the art is actually the weakest part of the manga. Now, you can be surprised by this in two situations. First, you haven't read the manga in recent years and you're just overly fantasizing about how great it was. And second, you have seen the manga floating around on the internet and since everybody uses like the same four spreads, <laughs> you probably think this is great, but here is a little something that they don't tell you. That's that's all the manga has, th those four spreads. <laughs> now of course I'm not saying that the manga doesn't have beautiful individual pages or just great illustrations in general, what I am saying though is that the manga doesn't go over the top with its art style. For the most part it's pretty contained, it's pretty okay, it has charm, it has character and lots of it, but it's not, it's not like a fucking masterpiece and that's, that's alright. In fact, the manga is able to separate itself from all the other fighting mangas because not only the fights are illustrated in a great way, but the emotional scenes are as well, uh, character introductions as well, uh, character significance is a very big one, the general pressure and heaviness of a room, there's so many things beyond the fighting that clearly have a lot of passion put into them, but in general it's a good thing that the manga has a lot of other things going for it because the art uh, can be can be a little weird sometimes. Now if Bucky has told me one thing, proportions are very very subjective, but in here things can look a little too awkward for my personal taste. Maybe some eyes are not exactly aligned, maybe uh, the hands, the hands are always comically too large for the characters, but there is this one specific panel of our main guy in which his hands <laughs> It's absurd. But for the most part, all of the issues, quote unquote, with the proportions are not always there. It's, it's pretty okay. However, what is not okay in the slightest is, is uh, this little thing. These stupid ass 3D character designs can be seen throughout the manga in a few places and it, it looks fucking ugly. I'm not sure who thought of this, why was this there, maybe to cut costs for some reason. I know they play through what is actually happening in the manga in the office, maybe they have like 3D designs for reference or something and they are on a very tight budget or a tight time schedule or something and they just have to make do with the 3D models, I'm not sure, but every time they're there it looks fucking awful. Now luckily they are shown like, I don't know, 7 eight times at most, there's this one panel in which this was like the main point and they kind of like tried to cover it up, that was very very ugly, but for the most part we don't see that shit too often. But in general, is the art great? Yes, yes it is. Is it amazingly, excitingly over the top great? Yes, it is. Does it feel that way? No. No, it doesn't. <laughs> and that's mostly due to the terrible, terrible pacing of some fights. But before we jump into that shit show, I just want to address the, the other semi-big part of the manga. Because for the most part, this is just fights and all of the colorful things attached to them and politics. Now, I'm normally, especially in a fighting manga, I'm not a big fan of that shit, man. It's, it's always semi-tacked on and never feels great. But in here, I can think of only one example where I couldn't give less of a shit of, uh, you know, what is being shown to us in the dumbass politics, but for every other case it's actually pretty great. And that's mainly because it's very very overly simplified and we don't spend too much time on it in general. It, it kind of exists so the manga has a original premise and it does by the way. The whole uh, culture around the Kengen matches and uh, the, the way that it started, the way that it's still currently being run and uh, the, the, the narrative reason for our characters fighting. I actually really really like that and the fact that it really helps the world building in general. Now, is it amazing? No, but it's cool. 
Now let me give you an idea of what all of the fights look like. Normally we're introduced to two characters, the fight starts, they exchange a few blows and then we stop the fight to explain their backstory or some of their very very core moves. Afterwards the fight starts again, they, they continue fighting and then we stop again to explain a technique or two and maybe the, the fucking commentators need to give some very insightful opinions and then the fight starts again, they, they battle it out, this is the meat of the fight and then it's immediately stopped afterwards because we need to explain what exactly happened in this one page and then it starts up again and then it ends and it's kind of like awkward. <laughs> now in spite of that the fights for the most part are actually great and that's because those little pauses between the action we make can have some information that is of quality, we can have good information and bad information and that's for the most part what makes or breaks a fight. Now what makes the manga is the great interruptions which can be pretty much anything. From very key details about how characters function and basically how the world around them and the world that they were raised in functions uh, to the new concepts that I genuinely couldn't even think of before I read it like finger locks for example. I was fully engaged in this basically wall of text right here because this was a new concept to me that was actually relevant to the fight and it felt great. Another thing that basically never misses are all of the backstories. Now the backstory that are not really explored, I'm not talking about those, I'm talking about the ones to which we have dedicated like two specific pages at least to you know explain what this character is about. And they're never great because the art hits its peak there or anything, no, they're always great because of the narrative heaviness that they display. They're genuinely amazing and probably my personal favorite part of the manga. However, what breaks the fights? are all of the very very basic techniques that for some reason we stop and look at for like two pages and the manga like explains to us in great and mm, some might argue unnecessary detail about how this punch like does whatever the fuck instead of just like showing us what it does we, we, we sit here with our fucking hands in our pockets and say oh wow is that what's happening oh so fucking cool you know how when you watch like an action anime and the characters on the sidelines just like sit there and talk all of the time and give you greater context quote unquote uh, of what is actually going on aka just like reiterate whatever the fuck you're seeing well this is kind of the manga equivalent to that sometimes i know those words are harsh and i don't want to say this about one of my favorite mangas but fuck me man i can summarize a page in here in like a sentence and move the fuck on this it feels really awkward sometimes. What you might notice that the last fights were the best ones, not because of the narrative heaviness, which you know, of course that's part of it, but because we don't have to interrupt the fights all of the time, because we know the techniques of our characters, we know their personalities, we know pretty much everything about them, and whenever we interrupt the fight, it's for an actual reason, and, and it feels good to have greater context, but for the most part, we know what is going on, and we just look at our boy's fight, which is why we all read this manga. And I'm sure if you have read the manga, your favorite fights are the ones in which we had the most time to just sit with the characters, their thoughts and their actions, not in which we you know, go over these unnecessary details for some reason. You get what I'm trying to say here, right? And with that said, is the final battle in here a timeless classic of peak entertainment? Yes, absolutely fucking yes. But is every fight like that? No, no, it's that's very clearly not the case and I think it's stupid to pretend like it is. I'm pretty sure something that everybody has universally agreed on is that the characters are the best part of the manga. And it's not because they're very very nuanced and always developing and always having interesting conversations with each other, that's definitely not the case, in fact some of the gags of the manga just go off by the fact that you know these characters are, some of them at least, a pretty one note. However, in spite of that, everybody from the fighters to the CEOs that are on that alpha grind set are basically the embodiment of passion. They straight up resemble pure conviction. They're what happens when a human being is struggling with the challenges of their own ideas. This is what I like to see in all of my entertainment. This is what I'm generally interested in my life. This is so far up my alley 
and it's honestly it should be far up any other respectable human beings Ali this is some great stuff that's being explored through the conviction of these characters now I know just a minute ago I said that the characters don't really develop that much that was kind of a lie they they all develop in simple and basic ish ways some of them just you know stay the same however the characters that really really change are our two main men they're not boys they're men Okuma goes through so much fucking shit he explores the world he explores other characters he explores parts of his mind and he always stays true to his goals Wow, uh, having some, some serious character development to him. He's definitely a highlight of the manga, but he or any other character for that matter pales in comparison to Kazuo. This motherfucker is the purest example of motivation, of looking at somebody with resolve and deciding, hey, you know, fucking, I'm gonna try to live my best life as well. And the general message that these two give us of I'm here and I'll fuck up life and I'll deal with whatever is thrown my way, I find to be amazing. And it's again, not only them, kind of the whole team of the manga is just how convicted people, how passionate people achieve shit. And I love that. Now, before I review my score, I feel like I have to, you know, address a little something. And that being that I am very, very nostalgic towards this series. This was one of the first things that really opened up to my mind to what the medium of manga is capable of. And directly going off that, it, it you know, sparked a little something to continue reading. And afterwards, I, I got interested in the general uh, talk around manga. And then I realized that uh, manga YouTube is kind of shit. And uh, directly from that, I had the idea to create this, uh, to kind of like fix that. And now I'm doing this. This is, this manga is a key part of, of my personal experiences in life and a key part of this very channel. Now, with all of that said, this is a very, very strong eight. Now, if you're not as nostalgic as me or if you're just having a bad day or, I don't know, you don't want your time sometimes actively wasted by a manga, then hey, this is maybe a seven, probably a six too, I don't know. But if you're getting into fitness, if you're getting into fighting games or anything in general that has physical activity and or fighting, if you're at the right time of your life, if you're very impressionable or, you know, just a teenager, then this is a nine, maybe even a 10. But I have been all of those things while reading this manga and I am very, very confident in saying that this is a strong Eight. Oh my fucking god, I'm hoping this video isn't as long as I think it will be, but if it is, thanks so much for making it to the end, man. It's, it's really cool. You know what's really cool too? This is a manga club. You can go onto the about page of this channel and see the next three reviews that I'm gonna be making, or just like wait two seconds because I'm gonna tell you the next three reviews right now. Next exact review after this video that you're watching right now is gonna be Spy X Family, which is about how a manga can rip your fucking heart out with all of its hosts. Afterwards, we have Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z. That's right, that Dragon Ball, that the big one, the spiky hairs. I'm, I'm doing that because I'm a big boy now, I review big boy shit. If you don't know what Dragon Ball is, it's like the father of Shonen. It's cool. And last, the manga that I'm revealing to you right now, Bonoji? Bonoji? I'm not entirely sure, but this one, it's it's a romance. It's a romance manga and it's, it's very classy and it's very wholesome and I basically know uh, uh, next to nothing about this, apart from the fact that the ending takes place on Christmas and the episode, the review is gonna come out on Christmas, kind of. So, you know, I want it to be thematically relevant because I'm a fucking tryhard. <laughs> also, a little personal touch from me to you, social media. I post every other day manga panels hyping up the exact next manga, man. Want some manga shit on your timeline? Want to show your uh, support? That's that's a place for that. Go go follow that shit. Thank you. Fuck. That's that's the end. See ya.